Black and Jill Foster here for another PB&J card class and today I'll be using more of our new brush stroke stamps and today and I will be using them with lots of distress paints also some distress markers and some inking on the background so here's a look at the card we'll be creating today and this card features the slapstick cling stamp pure iris and this is a large scale stamp so it covers the front of a card or it's also great for mixed media and I'm beginning with my stamp and I'm going to apply distress paints directly onto the stamp. So I'm just using a dabbing motion to pat those onto the stamp. And these work really well with these brush stroke stamps because of the dauber tip you can place the ink colors exactly where you want them. And I will list all of the exact colors um, at the end of the video in the supply list. So first I'm covering the leaves with a lighter color and then I'm coming in here onto the flowers adding a couple variations of yellow and then some purples and some blues. And if you get any contamination of another color on the tip of the dauber, just color it onto a scratch paper and it'll clean it off. There I'm doing that with that color. So I'm going to lightly mist this with water just in case any of the paint has dried as I moved on to other colors. And I'm pressing this onto smooth Nina solar white cardstock and I like to use a smooth cardstock just because it gets a great impression and then I just lift the stamp up and clean it right away. Now to add additional shading and dimension to this now I'm going to use my distress markers and I'm going to color right on top of the distress paint. This also allows you if you've gotten any paint in areas that you didn't want or it's the wrong color like purple on a leaf you can go in and color on top and adjust that. And now I'll take a brush with water and just blend that out. I'm being careful not to use too much water because I'm not working on watercolor paper so I don't want to oversaturate the paper and have it start to peel up. So just a very light wash of water over the top. And now I'll continue this process on other areas of the flower. Sometimes I'll color onto acrylic block and then pick that up with water, especially if I want a very light wash. I'm adding additional shading on top of the leaves and stems. And then just like before, going back with a very light wash of water to blend that out and take away the harsh line of the marker. Now I did dry that with my heat gun before going on to the next step and I found I wanted a little bit more shading in here and I could even just color it directly on with the marker and blend it with my finger as long as it was on top of the paint because that was a non-porous surface so it allowed me to blend it out with my finger. And you can just keep playing with it until you're happy with the result. And if you need to go in with the water, you can do that as well. That's a nice way to lighten it if you've gone a little too heavy handed with your shading. You can add the water. You could even take a baby wipe and dab it up once you add the water to remove some of the color. Again, I dried it before going on to the next step. And I just wanted to add a few little dots here. So I use the distress marker as well. I think that adds to the realism of the image and just an extra detail. Now I added some inking on the background and I have all of the colors listed at the end of the video. I'm using Ranger Archival inks but you could use Distress inks or whatever inks you have on hand. I'm starting off of the edge of the paper and working my way on. For the most part the areas that have been stamped with the Distress paint will resist the ink as long as it's not too dark of an ink and so it's easy um, to apply that ink around the edges. I start light and then add darker color and that just gives me a little more control. So 
you can see that I had a lighter color on the bottom for the green and now I'm going back with a darker color. I find it's easiest to achieve darker color by adding more layers instead of a heavier pressure. Now this is a Faber-Castell Design Memory Craft Pit Pastel Pencil and this is almost like a chalk when you apply it so you can color it on and then just blend it with your fingertip and I'm adding it just along this one side of some of these stems and then blending with my finger and it gives a great shadow and adds awesome depth so it's a really easy step to do but it makes a huge difference in how the image looks. I'm just looking here to see if there's any other places I want to add it. It's easy to kind of go overboard with it, so I have to rein myself back a little bit. Now I really love to add just a light background stamping with these uh, brushstroke stamps because it gives it a vintage kind of botanical look. So I'm using Penny Black Letter Background. I applied my ink and then I removed some of it with a baby wipe before stamping. And this is just another Ranger Archival ink. And again, it'll be listed at the end of the video. And then I'll stamp again. Sorry about my head there. And then I'll get this corner as well. And once I finish stamping with that ink, I wanted to add it on top. And that just kind of pushes that text back a little bit because it's the same color on top so it tones it down just a little so I added a light layer of that on top of the stamped areas and then I decided I wanted to add just a little bit more stamping up here at the top to balance things. Next I'm taking the Picket Fence Distress Paint and I'm just coloring a little bit on these corners and blending it with my finger. I wanted to tie in the painted look of the flower to the background this was a nice way to do that and also again to push that text stamping to the background a little bit. I've also put a little bit of that paint on my acrylic block and then I'm going to mix in a little bit of water and then flick that onto my image just to get a few splatters. And if you get too many you can quickly grab them with a baby wipe and remove them. So once I was done, I just mounted this to a note card and also added my sentiment on a banner. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can also connect with Penny Black on our website, blog, Facebook, Pinterest, and Twitter. And at the end of this video, you'll find a complete supply list for everything used on today's card.